Everybody has a lifestyle but they don't have a life. Spirituality means you have a life which is throbbing and roaring within you. The economic well-being has come but sense has not come. If you're senseless, you may have everything but still nothing will happen well for you, really. Economy, ecology, education, these are the three things that this government should focus on. Sadhguru Jaggi Vasudev, over here. Economic well-being has come, but sense has not come. So it's not that we should not live well. We can live well, but we can do that very sensibly. And of course, living well, the first dimension of living well is we're living sensibly. If you're senseless, you may have everything, but still nothing will happen well for you, really. Well, recently you saw from Bangalore to Hosur, maybe Five, ten thousand trees which were more than hundred, hundred and twenty, hundred and thirty year old trees were cut. It was very painful to see it. But when people expressed their pain, I told them, don't complain. You want roads, right? But what is the compensatory action we will do? This is what is important. Do not complain against development because if you complain against that, you will be just bulldozed. This is the most fundamental dimension we put it across to United Nations, to the central government, we are talking to the state governments now, is it is not ecology versus economy. It is ecology and economy must function together. More sensible way of doing our economics, very important. I said in United Nations, which is being taken very seriously, I said, I want to officiate the marriage of ecology and economy, because if they don't come together, ecology will not survive. Spirituality does not mean a certain lifestyle. It's not about lifestyle, everybody has a lifestyle but they don't have a life. Spirituality means you have a life which is throbbing and roaring within you. Lifestyle, you can do it whichever way you want. That's why every few years I change my lifestyle just to confuse people around me <laughs> If I dress differently, if I act differently, if I do something different, even if I change my diet, they get confused because forever they have been made to believe spiritual person means he will speak like this, he will eat like this, he will sit like this, he will do only these things. That means he's constipated, he's not spiritual <laughs> Spiritual means you are not inhibited by anything, you are absolutely one hundred percent flexible. Spirit cannot be fixed in a concrete box, isn't it? Body has a form. Body must have a form because it's physical. But even your mind should not have a form actually. It should be able to take whatever it wants. Your consciousness cannot have a form. If it has a form, it is not consciousness, it's just a concrete block. 
So a spiritual person will not look in any particular way, he can be any way he wants. Because you want to transmit something, you look a certain way, because otherwise people will have problems <laughs> But right now, just to tell you, because uh, at one time I lived on my motorcycle, but last thirty years I've been so busy, never got on two wheels. Now again I'm back, I rode into Mysore city on my motorcycle this time. So people are looking at me, what happened? Nothing happened, just four wheels to two wheels is not a bad idea. Sadhguru, what would you want this current government, the new government to focus on and what would you like them to accomplish for the next five years? Uh... I don't care what they accomplish. I am very concerned of, about what the nation accomplishes in the next five years. <laughs> we must understand the government can set policies, the government can budget their policies. Still on the ground, it's we the people who have to put it into place. <laughs> there are many things that government has to do. Economy, ecology, education, three E's. These three things. In that priority, in that order of priority, why I'm saying this is, see there are many issues with the country. The most important issue is the condition of uh, human beings in this country. Forty percent of India looks terribly emaciated, malnourished. So, people will say all kinds of solutions, but if you really look at it, there's only one solution, the size of the economy has to be increased. If we do not consciously lower our population, nature will do it in a terrible way. The land and population pressure has come to such an ugly place. Whatever you do hurts the land right now. When we say ecology, we are thinking of many things, but we need to understand the most important thing is the soil. Once the soil goes bad, everything goes bad. Right now, that is the danger we are facing in this country. Forty percent of India's land in the next twenty-five years will be uncultivable unless we do something drastic. So we are trying to push, push for many policies, we need all of you, we need all of you to support this because without people's support these things will not happen. When economic activity takes speed, we tend to forget the ecological concerns. So to keep these two things in sync is very, very important. Fortunately, we have managed to convey many concerns about this. We are trying to push for laws. We have a latitudinal spread from Kanyakumari to Himalayas that we can just grow any crop that you want in the world. And we can grow twelve months of the year. If we handle this smartly, we can feed the entire world, not just this nation. As a part of this, we are launching a campaign called Kaveri Calling. Kaveri is calling whether the Kannada people and Tamil people can hear or not is the big question. They're busy fighting with each other. So Kaveri Basin amounts for eighty-three thousand square kilometers. And we are talking to both the governments because we need little support on this. Wherever it's government land, we want to convert it in back into forests, proper forests. Agriculture land, at least one-third, we want to put it under agroforestry. With this, the farmer's income will multiply many-fold within five to seven years of time. Only thing is, first three to four years, he needs government support in the form of subsidies. It's not only about agriculture, there is enough science to tell you today that the land that you walk upon and the food that you eat, what is the nature of the food that you eat? 
will determine what kind of next generation you produce. The strength of the soil and the genetic content in your body are directly related and it becomes weaker. If you produce a generation of people who are less than you yourself, you have committed a crime against humanity. We are busy doing that right now. So ecology is important, the next thing is education. Right now, as we said in many different words, all we have is population and population. We don't have enough natural resources for 1.3 billion people. We don't have an economy to serve 1.3 billion people. We don't have enough land to serve 1.3 billion people. If you upgrade the population to a higher level of capability, to a higher level of competence, to a higher level of function, then we could become a miracle of human potential. Too many people are left out of the education system. The education system we have is such right now that it has a very limited application. There are too many educated people who don't know what to do with themselves. We need to restructure our education systems for which uh, we are in the process of writing an education policy. The government is also leaning towards this. So these three things – economy, ecology, education – these are the three things that this government should focus on.